Richard, considering people have been talking about this as a possibility for months and months and months, years even, it's a surprise that it's a surprise this morning that uh, Cynthia Carroll, the CEO of Anglo-American, has decided to step down. Um, let's talk a little bit about her record. Um, what are some of the good things she's done? It's Friday. Let's ask that okay. side first. Good things. Good things are easy to come to mind, uh, and she um, took them on quite early on. One was safety. She really wanted to make Anglo's deep and dangerous mines safer, and she's had relatively good progress on that. And I think she's changed the mindset of the broader industry, so safety is now a wider concept. Um, she simplified Anglo. Anglo was as many fiefdoms. She inherited an unwieldy, effectively, federation of little fiefdoms. So she simplified that, and she's cut out tiers of management. So it is a more streamlined group, but unfortunately, you know, we have to be measured by financial metrics as well. And many financial metrics there are. I mean, very hard to blame her to come into the job right at the beginning of 2007, just before the, you know, the worst financial period possible. Um, but she has underperformed the index, which takes some doing considering that index includes banks. Okay. But if you look at things like return on assets, ROE, margins, um, ROE is more than half. Good. ROE is more than half. Margins probably down, I think, about 17 percentage points to around 12 now at the half year. Half year earnings really collapsed by about nearly 50 percent. And the share price is down about a quarter in her tenure, although that's not as bad as, say, Xtrata. But there are, you know, there are any number of metrics. And I think the sum of metrics um, that that weigh against her on the scorecard is, is far heavier than those in her favour. And how much of those things were in her control and what were bad decisions? Okay, she, she staked her, 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 her claim to making Anglo a less South African company, has about a third of its net assets in South Africa and about half of earnings come from there. She's trying to rejig that and so she bet on nickel in South America, Copper in South America got a bit messy with Cadelco during the last year and a bit, but she's she's basically scored ticks on copper, ticks on nickel. The big problem, however, is her Minas Rio iron ore project in Brazil. Now that is again not entirely her fault, but maybe they overpromised and they've they've totally underdelivered because you've got problems with permits in Brazil and it's a very complex project pumping effectively iron ore slurry to the coast from the mine. And that, that is a problem that even Vale in Brazil is experiencing, so not entirely in her control. But I think the problem is that it's presented as a big signature project and it hasn't, hasn't actually worked out. It's, on, it's behind, behind track at the moment, quite seriously. Okay, well let's look forward very quickly then. Um, stock's up a little bit today. Um, good time for investors to buy, do you think? It is a good time for investors to, to buy if you believe in the commodity cycle and I think um, sustain Chinese demand. And Anglo is in a better shape than it was before she started. So the next guy that will girl that comes in is going to have an easier job of it. But even so, the next CEO is going to have to tackle the South African government and it's going to have to be an absolute dab hand at government engagement or whatever you call it. So I think it's going to be quite tough there. And I think until Christmas, when the ruling ANC in South Africa has its big party um, conference, we won't know for sure the stance of South Africa on nationalisation. So I think maybe just hold off till December before you dive in. Okay, well, thank you very much, Richard. Now I guess it's over to the board to try and find her replacement very quickly so we can look at that person next. Thank you very much.